Ashemi is the director of the Center of Middle East Studies at the University of Denver, and he joins us live now from London. And Nader, thank you very much indeed for coming on the program. Um, the language of Rafael Grossi there, uh, a fatal blow, he said it could be, to the 2015 deal. He said the, the window of opportunity was very, very small indeed. I mean, do you agree with, with his sentiments and, and what are the implications if it fails? Yeah, the picture uh, looks very bleak uh, in terms of uh, diplomacy uh, uh, resolving this uh, crisis between Iran and the United States. Uh, he also said today in his remarks that there's about three to four weeks left to try and resolve uh, the, the problem of Iran's nuclear program. Um, and of course, um, the big concern is that if there isn't a resurrection of the Iran nuclear agreement, that uh, a potential war looms on the horizon. And of course, that would be catastrophic, not just for Iran, not just for the broader Middle East, but for the entire world. Um, we hear of uh, traces of enriched uranium in three new sites. And of course, these uh, 27 cameras have been removed now. Um, how do you think Israel will react to all this? Well, um, Naftali Bennett just gave an interview to The Economist where he in invoked this term, the octopus doctrine that Israel is now using toward Iran. And that means, um, according to the Israeli prime minister, they're just not going after the tentacles anymore. They're going after the head. And it's important to um, point out uh, that last month, during the month of May, uh, the Israelis assassinated not one, not two, not three, but four senior members of the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Um, Israel is very much um, interested in the collapse of diplomacy and very much wants um, uh, the United States uh, to launch a war against Iran. Um, so I think this is a big factor in um, where we are today and what might you know, happen in the next uh, few months. But of course, it's Joe Biden in the administration now and not Donald Trump, uh, as it was when, when the deal was ripped up. I mean, I do wonder what, what, what incentive there is for Iran now to come to the table and, and to do a deal, given what's happened in the past. Well, that's a good question. I mean, the incentive is, of course, the lifting of sanctions. Iran's economy is in shambles. There are protests in major Iranian cities. Um, there's no way out of Iran's economic woes unless there's a lifting of sanctions. So those are the incentives. But you raise a good point. Given the uh, deep polarization within the, within the United States today, there's a very good chance that Donald Trump and the Republicans could be back in control uh, of the White House in 2024. Uh, and so that raises the question from Iran's perspective, why um, jump back into a deal that can be then torn up again if Trump re-enters the White House exactly as he tore up, tore up the deal in 2018. And I think the reference here to Joe Biden is very important. Um, you know, there's a lot of parties to blame for this crisis that we're talking about. But I think Joe Biden has to be at the top of the list. We shouldn't forget that there was a nuclear agreement in place. The United States pulled out of that agreement in 2018 under Donald Trump. Biden said he would jump back into the agreement, but he was very slow in doing so. When he came into office, he dragged out the process of negotiations. He said that he didn't want sort of the exact same deal. He wanted to negotiate, quote, a stronger and longer deal. This pushed the prospects for diplomacy back. Then you had Iranian elections. Then Iran started to play hardball. So there's many countries to blame, many parties to blame for this current impasse. But I think Joe Biden and Secretary of State Anthony Blinken have to be at the top of the list for really the failure of, of, of their diplomatic approach in solving this important international issue. And therefore, they perhaps hold the key to, to getting it resolved. OK, Nader, we thank you very much indeed. Thanks for your thoughts. That's Nader Hashimi there from the University of Denver.